Hey guys, Dave Anderson here for Globe Trekker. You can find Globe Trekker at rvglobetrekker.com where you will find the very best in engineering and DIY solutions for your Overland Expedition vehicle. To get the most information about Globe Trekker zero torsion subframes, please watch all four of our how to install videos including the additional information videos we have put together that answer the most frequently asked questions, as well as these several from the Cab Over Spotlight videos. We will continue to post and release new and updated videos to help you along your epic journey. We understand you wouldn't be watching this if you were not currently investigating and exploring the many questions to answer about your next subframe such as the type of subframe, subframe pivoting, subframe length, the pivot locations, mounting stairs and pass-through considerations, and of course, mounting the subframe to the chassis. Don't worry, we'll tackle all these questions one by one. We do not recommend a spring over subframe. This is not a true zero torsion subframe. The laws of physics tell us a spring in compression also has a force acting in the opposite direction. And with the greater distance of tension or compression, the force is increased due to the spring coefficient. Force equals spring coefficient times distance. True, it may reduce overall height of the subframe, but you'll need to increase the weight of the subframe to overcome the increased loads from the springs. Spring over systems are common with heavy load vehicles because loading is not a big consideration and it's a cheap option. For overlanders, weight is always a concern. As you learn the lingo, you'll start asking, how do I know if I need a 3.0 torsion subframe or a four point system? And what is a three slash four point hybrid system that I have heard about? When would that even come into play? Besides that, what is an ISO subframe all about? These are all great questions. So let me first start by asking you a few questions for your design consideration. For mounting, how long is the usable bare frame rail that will be available to mount the subframe to? Generally speaking, this is the measurement from the back of the cab of the truck to the end of the frame rail, assuming the truck's frame rail has been cleared of all components, such as a spare tire carrier. Secondly, you would want to know if you are planning a pass-through or not. Believe it or not, a pass-through can significantly determine subframe pivot placement to reduce frame twist from dislodging your pass-through expansion boot. Let's start with this given. A three-point is in a triangle formation and a four-point is in a diamond formation. Both formations have a rotational twist along the center line of the chassis. The side pivots control the subframe movement in relation to the chassis torsional twist. The decision of a three-point versus a four-point is defined by the subframe size, weight of the habitat, and also the cantilevering of weights. For the ease of explanation, let's start small, then work our way up. Let's say you have an F-350 Ford Dually or equivalent Dodge or Chevy long bed. Let's also say the available frame length is right around 8 feet, give or take, of course with variation, depending on the year and manufacture, model, etc. Taking into consideration that there will be a small gap between the habitat and rear of the cab, at least 4 inches, the recommended subframe length will be 8 feet. This will cause the habitat to overhang the rear of the truck frame a few inches. You could choose a habitat base length to be 10 feet with a two foot departure angle that cantilevers the rear two feet of the habitat over the subframe. However, a cab over can also be added, could put the total gross weight of the vehicle close to maximum. Discretion must be applied since smaller vehicles maximum gross weight is the biggest limiting factor when determining to use one for overland expeditions. Another significant error with the smaller and even mid-sized larger trucks is lengthening the frame past the rear axle to accommodate for more subframe and habitat, or simply adding too much weight rearward of the rear axle. This is highly likely to lead to a significant steering problem, especially in slick conditions such as snow, ice, or mud. Discretion is advised. So the length of the available truck frame rail is probably the biggest factor in determining how many pivot points your subframe should have, with a few other considerations, which I will shortly discuss. 
The three-point subframe system is designed for subframes 14 feet and shorter, which will accommodate up to a 16-foot departure angle habitat. It really comes down to how many pinpointed loading points you have versus how much weight you can theoretically carry. The larger the habitat, the more pinpointed loading points you should have. Considerations also come into play. For example, the 19-foot Pathfinder cab over has a 14-foot departure angle main body we call the base. That means the floor is 12 feet and so is the subframe. This fits easily into the 14-foot maximum length for a three-point. However, due to the cab over cantilevering a lot of weight over the front of the subframe, a four-point subframe is used in this application. So, cantilevering weight also plays a factor. Now, let's talk about why a pass-through matters at all when trying to figure out what kind of subframe is appropriate for your build. If a pass-through is to be used, you will need to locate your side bracket pivots as far forward as possible. Why? Think about what a cross-member pivot does. It allows the chassis frame to twist under the subframe while keeping the subframe torsion-free. So, if the cross-member pivots were all that you had, the subframe would flop side-to-side -side with impunity. Wherever those side bracket pivots are mounted to that section of the truck frame, it will tell the subframe how to locate itself because that is where it laterally attaches and pivots to the truck frame. They are the link to the truck frame that push up and pull down depending on how the truck frame is twisting in reaction to uneven terrain. Therefore, the shorter the frame rail distance between the cab and where the side brackets are mounted, the less the frame has a chance to twist. Since the pass-through is several feet off the center of the frame rotation, movement is amplified, especially with taller pass-throughs. Application A 12-foot subframe carrying a 14-foot departure angle habitat that has a 3-point subframe, which means the side brackets are located forward and a single cross pivot is located aft, the subframe and habitat will closely follow the cab of the truck due to the side brackets being so closely located to the cab. This is ideal for a pass-through situation. If you do not want a pass-through, we normally recommend a four-point pivot system since four-point pivot loads are easier to carry than three-point pinpointed loads. The cost difference is negligible and a cross-member pivot forward is easier to install than a three-point heim joint lateral retention system. Obviously, these guys should have watched this video. Pro, 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 pro Some enthusiasts think you need to have the center line of the subframe twist at the center of the chassis torsional twist. Not a bad practice, but not necessary. First, your truck chassis will vary in torsional twist based on the terrain and weight supplied. Second, the twist of the subframe and the chassis are really independent. All right, so let's get back to the topic at hand. What if you have a cab over with a 12 foot four point subframe due to the cantilevered weight forward of the forwardmost cross member pivot and you want to pass through? Remember how the subframe frame we call the weldment has mounting holes for a full 24 inch variety of positions that the side brackets can fit into? Simply mount the side brackets as far forward as you can. This will mitigate the frame twist differential as much as possible. Subframes built for extra long trucks greater than 14 feet are all four point subframes or more. The use of stiffer plates are also used to ensure the integrity of the subframe weldment cross members where the cross member pivots are attached. The three slash four point hybrid subframe. Larger subframes from 14 up to 18 feet can accommodate a pass through with a three slash four point hybrid T formation of subframe pivots. In this model, the three-point system is used with the side pivots mounted forward with the heim joints installed as backup lateral movement restrictors, along with two aft cross-member pivots mounted in tandem. Even greater lengths of subframes are achieved with additional cross-member pivots. Beyond the 18-foot subframe length, the four-point diamond-shaped pivot system is used with the addition of one rear cross-member pivot mounted in tandem with the aftmost pivot. The beauty of the Globe Trucker design is the flexibility of our components as they can be configured to meet your design requirements. Pivot Positioning 
Generally speaking, aft crossmember axial pivots should be placed in the furthest aft crossmember weldment, unless you are planning to add an internal water tank or something else that is potentially heavy toward the mid-range of the habitat. The idea here is to manage the load. With a truck bed, you want most of the weight over the rear axle and evenly dispersed from there, forward and aft. Mid-habitat weight can be accommodated by moving the rear crossmember pivot forward one weldment crossmember of the rearmost crossmember weldment. Departure angle habitats that already cantilever an additional 2 feet should not cantilever more than 48 inches from the rearmost crossmember pivot. The forward crossmember should also be placed as far forward as possible unless loading dictates otherwise. In cab over models, the crossmember shall be placed in the furthest most weldment crossmember due to the cantilevered weight of the cab over overhang. Generally speaking, the side bracket pivots for a four-point diamond-shaped pivot system should be placed close to the rear axle so that when the axle moves with terrain, the side bracket pushes and pulls on the subframe and habitat in the same manner to keep it clear of the rear tires. Vehicles with four-point subframes and pass-throughs must opt for a middle ground between the rear axle and cab. Usually this means mounting the side brackets as far forward on the weldment as possible. The good news is, our subframe weldments are designed for both 3-point and 4-point configurations in the same weldment, giving you ultimate flexibility. Side Pivot and Crossmember Positioning with the Access Stairs On our subframe weldment in the middle and front, pivot mounting has a 3-inch on-center spacing adjustability to adjust with clearing your chassis obstructions as well as providing access stair clearance. Pre-planning is key. Consider this. The position of your habitat door will dictate where your access stairs will be. Align the hinge of the door with the right side of the access stairs so you have more room on the handle side of the door when opening or closing the door for ingress or egress. The access stairs, in part, will dictate where your side bracket pivots will need to be located, or more accurately, where the side bracket pivots cannot be located. It is also necessary that the side bracket pivots be located fairly close to the access stairs so that frame twist does not compromise your access stairs by pinching them between truck parts and the habitat. Hanging storage bins. Sure, it can look cool and simple to have the storage bins connected to the bottom of the habitat and subframe. But as your subframe is dancing above the truck, you probably don't want all that weight affecting your center of gravity. And isn't the goal of the truck frame to carry the weight and loads? Having the bins hanging off the truck frame is more direct to controlling weights. Once again, it is your option, but we opted for functionality. Globe Trekker's ISO subframe. The ISO 1161 subframe was originally designed for the Unimog for quick on and off components that could configure a truck rapidly for tactical purposes. At Globe Trekker, we have taken that a big leap forward. Not only is the habitat removable for the establishment of base camp and lightweight off-roading, the weldment becomes a zero-torsion flatbed deck that can be used to haul lumber and other materials. It turns your overland expedition truck into a daily driver or work truck. How is that for versatility? There is much to consider, and we understand this. We at Globe Tractor are doing our best to help you shorten your learning curve. With our subframe components, not only can you have flexibility, but peace of mind knowing that your investment in an Overland Expedition camper is in good hands.